this is the kind of service that can change your life. We've, we've felt the presence of God so strong already. Um, I'm going to turn over to, if you will, turn over to Daniel chapter 5. Um, that's where I'm going to do most of the reading from tonight. Uh, boy, I tell you, it is so good to see everybody out here tonight. Uh, got a lot of people here that's never been here before, uh, that I, since I've been here anyway, and uh, I'm so glad to see you guys, and I don't want to start naming names, or I'm sure forget to name somebody, but good to see everybody tonight. I want to make you welcome. I want to remind you that the altar is open all the time in the church. Uh, if God bids you come and pray, that's when to come and pray, right then. Don't let the devil have a second to talk you out of it, because it won't take him long. Uh, you just obey God tonight. Whatever He leads you to do, if you'll obey God tonight, you won't go wrong. You'll, <laughs> we'll, be blessed, we'll all be blessed from it. But All right, I'm going to start reading in the first verse here. Familiar scripture, Daniel chapter 5, uh, talking about Belshazzar. Uh, it says, Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. And Belshazzar... While he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and silver, of brass, of iron, of wood and of stone. In the same air com- came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him so that the joints of his loins were loosed and his knees smote one against another. The king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers, And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof uh, shall be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about his neck and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing nor make known to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was king Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Astonished, in other words. If you will, bow your heads with me in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, so much, Lord, for what we felt here already tonight, Lord. We thank you for your presence, Lord, for you meeting with us here tonight, Lord. And uh, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you just continue any work that you've started here tonight, Lord. Uh, if there is a need here tonight, we ask that you'd meet it, Lord. We just ask that you'd move in each one of them according to your precious and holy will, Lord. Lord, we ask, Lord, you'd help me tonight to preach according to your will, Lord. Give me the words to say, Lord, and help each one of us, Lord, to apply it in our lives in a way that you'd see fit. Lord, most of all, Lord, we ask tonight, Lord, if there's one here that don't know you, uh, Lord, that tonight would be the night, Lord, that they'd come to know you, Lord, and that free pardon of sin, Lord. Lord, just go with us now, Lord. Lead God and direct us, Lord. Help each one of us to be obedient, Lord, in this service tonight, Lord, and throughout each and every day. Lord, it's all these things that we ask in Jesus' precious and holy name, Lord. And amen. amen. Now, old Belshazzar here, he's a... <coughs> let me give you a little bit of background. Uh, it says that he is the son of the king, but he's not actually the, the son of the king, uh, Nebuchadnezzar anyway. He's the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar has died, and his son is now king, but his son is away, so Belshazzar is ruling in his absence. So here's this young king... Uh, in the making, and uh, he's kind of uh, full of himself. He's kind of showing out here a little bit, and we're going to see what happens to him. Um, it says, to begin with, he made a great feast. You know, he's got to show off a little bit, like I said. Uh, but in that feast, that you know, nothing wrong with having a feast. I like a good feast myself. Uh, but in that feast, you see, he started to dishonor God. It says there that. Uh, he told him, he commanded him to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple uh, which was in Jerusalem that the king and his princes, his wives, and his concubines might drink therein. Uh, and so it says, they brought the, vest, the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God which was at Jerusalem and the king and his princes and his wives and his concubines drank in them. Uh, they drank wine and praised the gods of gold uh, and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood, and of stone. 
but in the same hour, it says right here. Now it goes on. You know, I want to. I want to get too far ahead of myself. I want to uh, hang out right here just a minute. Uh, but in this same hour came forth the fingers of a man's hand and rolled over against the candlestick. The Bible says. Uh, now, you guys bear with me a minute. Like I said, I need to lay a little foundation here, maybe. But uh, in this Old Testament, you see all sorts of uh, uh, vessels of God. Vessels that were used. They were sanctified vessels. Uh, that word sanctified means to be set aside for a holy purpose. We've looked at that before. Uh, but you see these sanctified vessels that were set aside for the worship of God. Now Nebuchadnezzar had taken Jerusalem and he had taken a lot of these vessels uh, when he had spoiled the city there and brought it up. Uh, but Nebuchadnezzar had come to the knowledge of God, you see. And, and once he come to the knowledge of God... Uh, he had these vessels of God put stored away so that nothing uh, could corrupt them or any, any unclean thing could touch them or anything like that. Uh, but Belshazzar, when he comes along, he says, uh, I need to, to show off a little bit, so I want you to go down there and get all those vessels of God, uh, and I want you to bring them up. Now, uh, in the Old Testament, you see these vessels, like I said, of God. Uh, here's, the, here's where things change, though. You see, this is, this is where we're at today. We're under a new covenant. Uh, there's been a new covenant made. There's no longer gold and silver cups used for the worship of God. Uh, there's no longer a temple somewhere that we have to go to to be able to get in touch with God. Uh, we don't have to come to a high priest, at least not in a fleshly form, uh, to, uh, to have a prayer answered by God. You see, Christ become our high priest. Uh, so we're under a new covenant today, and we become the vessels of God. Now what got Belshazzar in trouble here uh, was that he took the vessels of God, the chosen vessels, the sanctified vessels of God, uh, and he began to use these things. He committed sacrilege, as, as uh, the word goes. Uh, he committed sacrilege. He started to take the pure things of God, and he started to mix those pure things of God with the unpure things of the world. Now, now us as Christians today, if we are the vessels of God, we are to remain pure. Amen? Everybody agree with that? Now, we need to stay unspotted from the world. Now, everybody knows we're going to fail. We're going to uh, have problems and things like that because we're bound in the flesh. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, I think we could all do a lot better than what we have been doing, if the truth be told. Now, I know that my mirror tells me a lot of things that I don't like to hear sometimes. Uh, but when you start to take the vessels of God uh, and start to pour the unclean thing in there and you start to mix it with the things of the world, uh, it becomes an abomination to God. And God begins to take notice of those things that are going on. Uh, believe me tonight, if you're a Christian, if you're here, you say, well, I'm born again. Uh, I got saved 37 years ago, however long ago it was. Uh, I'm a Christian tonight. But uh, believe me, God expects a life out of you. Uh, God expects you to grow spiritually until they lay you in the ground one day. Uh, but us as Christians, we're content on the milk. Uh, we like to, uh, to take the little baby things of Christianity. You know, we, uh, uh, we're content with the Noah's Ark coloring book or whatever it may be. Uh, when God wants to put a life down inside you uh, and raise up a holy vessel that can be used for His glory and His honor tonight. Uh, but we don't want to take that kind of responsibility in that. Uh, we'd rather let somebody else walk that walk, you see. We'd rather let somebody else uh, live up to the laws of God and the expectation of God. Uh, and we'd rather sit back and, and just count on grace and mercy uh, and say, God, take care of me. But I'm going to tell you something tonight. Uh, you want to see the rewards of God in your life. Uh, you want to see blessings come down. You start taking the unclean things uh, out of the vessel of God. You start separating the things of the world uh, from the things of God. And you say, I no longer will touch the unclean thing. I will no longer take part of the things in the world. Uh, and you watch and see. You try God tonight. Uh, you stop robbing Him tonight. You try Him and see if He won't pour out a blessing that you can't contain. You just try Him. It says that in the same air came forth fingers of a man and rode over against the candlestick uh, right up there in the light where everybody could see. You see, yeah, there's nothing hidden from these people. Uh, but you know, along comes these fingers of a man's hand. And uh, if you'll read back a little bit further in the Old Testament, you'll find where the Ten Commandments, the law of God, uh, was written by the finger of God. You see, I believe the same finger that wrote that law uh, come along and wrote this thing for Belshazzar to see. I believe the same hand that wrote the Ten Commandments in stone uh, that wrote this for Belshazzar to see. I believe that one day uh, he bent down and wrote in the sand when the woman come forth accused of the Pharisees 
And he said, He that is without sin cast the first stone. Uh, you see, he's a, uh, we talked about it this morning. Uh, the Bible tells that Jesus Christ is a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Uh, he's a priest that abideth continually without beginning of days or ending of days. Uh, he's been there since the foundation of the world. Uh, he is the Alpha and Omega, and He is the power of God, I promise you tonight. Uh, you want to change your life, you get a hold of the Son of God tonight. Uh, you get yourself out of the way, and you allow God to, to make the changes in your life that, that He wants to make tonight, uh, you'll start to see the blessings of God. Amen. We have it. I thought it was a good idea. I've had it on my mind for a long time. Donald said, let's have prayer service. Uh, I thought it was the first thing coming to my mind. Jesus said, my house would be called a house of prayer. Uh, bring these people with needs in, and let's see these needs met. Uh, let's see God give them a testimony. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, I heard a boy, he used to say it all the time in the church up in Jackson County. Uh, he said, uh, God won't bless a mess. I'm going to tell you. Uh, if you're sitting here tonight thinking that you can run out into the world, uh, that you can straddle the pole, that you can have one foot out there and one foot into the, uh, the will of God, you're wrong tonight, you see. Uh, God didn't raise something like that up tonight. God didn't send His perfect Son down here uh, to raise up an imperfect being tonight. Uh, he sent His Son down here tonight that He might seal your soul and that He might make something perfect uh, inside of something that was imperfect from birth up. He's got a life for you tonight. But He'll not force it on you. It said there that when they seen this writing that the, the king's countenance was changed. Well, I bet it was. <laughs> uh, you know, he's over here partying, having a big time. Uh, along comes the fingers of a man's hand with no, with no man there to see. You know, he's just a, there's just a hand over here writing on the wall. Uh, against the light, against the candlestick there, the Bible says. And it said that his countenance was changed and his thoughts troubled him uh, so that the joints of his loins were loose and his knees smote one against the other. Uh, and the king cried aloud, Bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, the soothsayers. And the king spoke uh, and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing uh, and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet uh, and have a chain of gold about his neck. Uh, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. And it says that then came in all the king's wise men, uh, but they could not read the writing, nor make known the king to the king the interpretation thereof. Uh, then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed uh, for the second time by the way in him, uh, and his lords were astonished there. Uh, you see the hand of God come down, and the hand of God writes nothing but the will of God on the wall, uh, and Belshazzar don't have the discernment to understand uh, that it takes the man of God with the Spirit of God dwelling in him uh, to come in and interpret the things of God. So he starts to bring in the wise men of Babylon, uh, the astrologers, the soothsayers, all these, uh, they probably reading tarot cards and looking into a crystal ball or something crazy like that. Uh, when there's no power in that thing, there's no, uh, there's nothing but the power of Satan in those things and, and all that power has already been defeated, you see. Uh, the world wants to hang on to that. The world is looking for answers anywhere that it can find answers today uh, except in the Word of God and except in the will of God. Uh, you look around today, uh, turn your TV on for 30 minutes and see if you don't see a commercial for some psychic hotline or something like that. Uh, see if you don't see something on there where they're offering answers for things that can't be answered uh, except through and by the will of God. I tell you, God's not pleased with these things. Uh, and these things have even come into the church. They've entered the church. Uh, people who are supposed to be God's people are doing these things. Uh, they've stepped away from the will of God. Uh, they're ignorant of the Word of God. They don't understand that these things are even against God. Uh, I tell you, though, the Spirit of God gets down in you, He'll start to teach you a little bit. Uh, he'll start to lead you and guide you. Uh, you won't need me standing behind you, uh, pulling your ear every time you get out of the will of God. There should be a still, small voice in you uh, that speaks when you start to walk out of the will of God. Now Jesus said, my sheep, uh, they know my voice and they follow me. Now we plugged their ears so long now that we forgot what the voice of God sounds like, but He wants to speak to you tonight and He wants to bring you up out of sin. He wants to bring you into a place of power tonight. Uh, he wants to bring you in a place where you can lay hands on the sick, that you can see them healed, that you walk in a room uh, and the presence of God abides in you so strong uh, that people feel conviction when you walk in. 
I tell you, God wants to be good to you tonight. You know, we prayed for Beverly up here tonight, my aunt. Had that motorcycle wreck. Most of her heel bone and everything gone. They said they had nothing to attach to, didn't they? But I know God can bring up a new bone right there, you see. I know that the power that made the first body can heal that body. I know that He can. I believe this tonight. I'm not up here trying to make some kind of great big show tonight or anything like that. I know that God can heal that body. And not only that, but I know that God can move in every need that come before us tonight. I know that He can tonight. I know that His hand is not short. You see, I've seen the power of God in my life. I've seen the power of God in this church. I've seen the power of God in life after life after life that we've come in contact with lately. But there's one thing that I don't understand. You know, here's Ada. She's been healed. I tell you what, if you know, if you know Ada, you could see a difference in her between Wednesday night and Sunday. That's unbelievable. I'm going to tell you. Uh, nothing but the hand of God could have produced it. Uh, and I understand why she's not here tonight, but I look around the list of uh, some of the others and some of the things that I've seen God do in their lives. Uh, I'm going to tell you, if God had done for me some of the things that He's done for them, uh, you couldn't hog tie me and keep me out of the church. Uh, you couldn't tie me to a pole somewhere and keep me from glorifying God. Uh, what's wrong with people tonight? Uh, they want to take the, the holy vessel of God uh, and pour it in the unclean thing. They don't want to glorify God anymore. If He's worked in your life, you need to glorify Him. You need to uplift Him tonight. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness out there. Uh, he said that when the serpent come along and he bit, they bite the people. Uh, said that they was dying, left and right. One right after another, people dying from these serpents biting them. Uh, but Moses, he told him, he said, make a serpent of brass uh, and raise it up. And when the people are bitten by these serpents, uh, they can look on this serpent of brass and live. And Jesus Christ himself, he said, if I be lifted up like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, uh, the people will look on me and live. I will draw all men unto me. Uh, and they can come unto me. I will sup with them and them with me. Oh. Why don't people glorify God for what He's done for Boy, I tell you, He brought me a long way. You know? I mean, whew. All right, I'm going to skip some verses. I'm going to try not to read you to death and keep you all night. You go down to verse 14. Uh, enter the man of God. <laughs> Things are about to change here. Verse 14, this is Daniel speaking. They brought Daniel in. The queen told Belshazzar, he said, she said there was a man that uh, your father used back there. She made him head over all these wise men. and He had the spirit of the gods in him false gods. She is, she is deceived. Verse 14, he said, I have even heard of thee, talking to Daniel here, uh, that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. Uh, and now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me uh, that they should read this writing and make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Uh, but they could not show the interpretation of the things. And if I and I have heard of thee that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, uh, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet, have a chain of gold about thy neck, and shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now, I got a picture in my mind of Daniel. Probably in his nineties, he's an old man by now. And this little squirt king here, Belshazzar, he's rattling off all this stuff about how that the the wise men of Babylon couldn't interpret this right. And I can just see in my mind Daniel standing there before him, rolling his eyes, thinking, man, what's it going to take for this people to learn right here? He starts to preach to him the best message you ever hear in your life, just about it. In verse 17, he says, Then Daniel answered and said before the king, I Let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another. Yet will I read the writing unto the king and make known unto him the interpretation. Now this, O oh, thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom, actually his grandfather, yeah. and majesty and glory and honor, 
and for the majesty that he gave him, all people, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would he slew, and whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. But when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne, and they took his glory from him. And he was driven from the sons of men, and his heart was made like the beast. And his dwelling was with the wild asses, and they fed him with grass like oxen. And his body was wet with the dew of heaven. Until he knew the Most High God ruled in the kingdom of men, and that he appointed uh, over it whomsoever he will. And thou his son, O Belshazzar, hast thou not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all these things. You see, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, there you can read about it in the chapter before this. Uh, he got exalted within himself. He got kind of high and mighty, you know. Uh, he said, look at all these things that I've done. That was his words. Look at this that I've done, and look at this that I've done. Uh, and God come along, and he made him just like a wild animal. He eat grass out in the field. I forget. It uh, seemed like it was about seven years. He crawled around out there on his hands and knees and eat grass uh, and eat with the wild animals. And uh, Belshazzar here, you see, the problem is that he knew all this. He was, uh, he was probably around when all this kind of stuff happened. Uh, and you look today at our nation and you examine, just you just compare our nation just a little bit uh, with what happened here in Nebuchadnezzar's time. Uh, God raised up a great nation and He great, raised up great leaders there. Uh, he raised up a nation that could rule the world at that time. Uh, you look at this nation. You look at this United States, how great it has been. Uh, you look at what it was founded on. It was founded on the Word of God. Uh, our forefathers come over here so that the government couldn't tell them how they had to worship God. Uh, they come here because they wanted to honor and glorify and worship and uplift God. Uh, but as time has went on, we forgot about it. Uh, and just like Belshazzar here, I believe we'll be held accountable because uh, we've got that history to look back upon, you see. Uh, Belshazzar was held accountable because of what he knew, you see. Uh, God's not going to hold you accountable tonight if he don't tell you. Uh, I heard a man talking on the radio. He said, you know, uh, God's not going to hide his will from us. And he gave a little example I thought was pretty good. Uh, he said, imagine a man there. He said he's got maybe a, a 14, 15 year old son and he tells that boy, he said, come in here. And uh, he tells him, he said, here's the deal. He said, you do my will, I'll reward you for it. Now, if you get out of my will, I'm going to take you out to the woodshed and wear you out. And the old boy looks up at his dad and he says, Dad, I'll do whatever you ask me to. What do you want me to do? And the father looks down at him. He said, it's up to you to figure it out, you see. God's not going to hide his will from us. He wants to tell you what his will is tonight so that we can obey. But because Belshazzar knew the power of God and turned his back on it, <laughs> he was held accountable. See these these godly people that come up here tonight praying for other people's needs. The people here tonight, whether you're willing to recognize it or not, you've seen the power of God. God's been made manifest to you. I ain't nothing, but I preached enough to you tonight to save the world if they'd listen. The Word of God has come forth in these songs that they've sung tonight. Enough to save the world if they would just submit. The power of God, the, the evidence of God is, is everywhere in His creation. Uh, you look out here tonight. You uh, go out here and shine a light around. I know it's dark outside, but you look. Uh, and there's the creation of God and everything that's made reaching up to God. Uh, giving Him glory. Staying in their place tonight and doing exactly what they was created to do. But us, the people who, who God have given everything for, the ones that He has paid a great, the greatest price for, the ones who know and understand the will of God, we turn our backs on Him. Listen to this. <coughs> it says, But hast lifted up thyself against the Lord in heaven, and they have brought the vessels of his house before thee, and thou, hast, thou and thy lords, thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver and gold, of brass, iron, wood, and stone, which see not, nor hear, nor know. And the God in whose hand thy breath is, and whose are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. Understand tonight. Get a hold of this tonight. The next breath you take is allowed by God. 
And we all sit back and we say, yep, I believe that. I understand that. But we don't act like we believe that and understand that. Believe me tonight, just as there's been a lot of needs met here in this church that should not have been met according to the doctors, there's been a lot of people go on that should have not went on, you see. And and us as Christians, you we got certain little scriptures we quote all the time, and one of them, you know, well, you shorten your days by foolishness, you know? Don't be riding them roller coasters. Don't be driving fast down the road. Well, you might shorten your days like that, but that's not what the Word of God means when it says you shorten your days by foolishness. Uh, when you when you take on the blood of Christ and in your life reflect something completely different, you've entered into foolishness. And believe me, God holds that next breath and He cannot allow it whenever He chooses. You'll go home. You'll only make a mockery of God for so long. It says, Then was the part of the hand sent from Him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Meany, meany, tekel, you farson. This is the interpretation of the thing. <coughs> meany, God hath numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. <laughs> Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Verse 30 down there says, In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain. That night. <laughs> that night he was slain. Now, let me, let's get it in our own lap for a minute here. Let's get personal with it. What if it's you standing there in the balances? Meany, meany, tickle, you farson. Your kingdom is divided and it can't stand. That's right. You've been weighed in the balance and found wanting. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Man. Where are we going now? You've been weighed and found wanting. You say, I'm doing everything just right. I, won't, I wouldn't do it on a personal basis, but I'll stand up here and call you a liar if you're saying you're doing everything just right. Because you're not. I don't believe that for a minute tonight. You say, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. The Bible says that to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. You doing everything good that you know to do? Oh, you're found wanting. Put on people's hearts to have prayer tonight for the needs of this people that's gathered together. Somebody sat in their seat tonight with a need and wouldn't come forth. You've been found wanting. You've prayed about something. You've come to God, Almighty God. Now keep in mind who we're talking about. We ain't talking about some little fat Buddha doll. We're talking about Almighty, living God. You've prayed and you've asked Him for something, knowing that it would not happen. Praying without faith. Praying without believing. You've been found wanting. The Bible says that if you walk in the light, you have fellowship one with another. You've not had fellowship one with another. You've been found wanting. It says that you know that you pass from death unto life when you have love for the brethren. You don't love your brethren. You've been found wanting. You see, all of my point, (laughs) boy, sounds pretty hopeless, don't it? (laughs) My point tonight is that for you and me, No matter where you're at in your walk with God, there's room for you to move up. There is room for you to get closer to God tonight. Now, maybe I've done a a bad thing to you tonight, but just like Belshazzar here, because you know it, now you'll be held accountable for it, you see. Now God can hold you accountable for that thing that you know. Not that you didn't know it already, you see. Uh, Most of a preacher's job is to tell people what they already know. Amen? Amen. I mean, for the most part. But they've been weighing the balances and they've been found wanting. But see, they're just not doing everything they're supposed to be doing. Over here in Second Corinthians 6.17 it says, 
Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. Touch not the unclean thing. Come out from among them. I seen where somebody posted on Facebook the other night. The world has become churchy, and the church has become worldly. Yeah. I will tell you, you can't tell a lot of difference in a lot of places. That's right. I mean, you know, I've seen it. You know, everybody, all of us preachers, we like to talk like this. You know, how all the everybody else's church is going to hell. You know, or whatever. Come to mind. I'm not saying that tonight. I know there's good churches out there. But I've seen some that you can't tell the difference in between the church and the world. Amen. A lot of the people going there, uh, we've talked about it before, a lot of one going there, uh, they'll fit in just as good down at the blue moon tonight as they would in the church house. Amen. Now that's a fact. Come with it. Come with it. Some of you tonight. I don't know. I, I hope everybody here is living right at the foot of the cross. But if I was a betting man, and I'm not, but if I was, I'd be willing to bet that some of you will be at work in the morning telling nasty jokes Lord, Lord, Lord. or something like that. <laughs> you see, you, you'll be content. I call it the chameleon syndrome. Everybody's tired of hearing that probably, but you've seen them lizards, yeah. chameleons. You stick him on the wall and he turns white. Yeah. You stick him on the floor and he turns whatever color that is. You stick him up here and he'll turn brown. You see, he just blends in wherever he goes. Yeah. Christians, we've caught that little chameleon syndrome. We've, we've developed the ability to blend in no matter where we go. God didn't say blend in. He said, come out from them and be ye separate. That's what God said. Now, I got one more scripture. Somebody be uh, getting me a song, if you will. <clears throat> Anybody know about Nicodemus? John 3 starts in the first verse. It said, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, you talk about weighing the balance and found wanting. Here's Nicodemus. He comes along. He said, I've kept the law from my youth up. Uh, I've not stole. I've not killed. No. All he's saying, you know, whatever. My, uh, he's probably went through the whole law in his mind. And he's told himself a big fat lie. He said, I've kept the whole law, which no man ever done except for Jesus Christ. But he's told himself the same thing a lot of people tell themselves nowadays is that I don't need to get saved. I'm a good person. God will let me in. He's a God of mercy, a God of love. And I don't need to get saved. I preached this morning on that wedding garment. That king come in and he found that man there and he said, How'd you, how enterest thou in without the wedding garment on? And he had him cast out, you see. God's got a garment for you and you've got to put it on if you're going to enter into that wedding supper. And it's the wedding garment. And it's the garment. He provided His own garment. The Bible says in Revelation 19, it talks about Jesus coming in that vesture dipped in blood. You see, He's provided His own garment and He's provided His own blood for your garment tonight. And unless you put it on, you'll be found in the balance, you'll be waiting the balance and found wanting more than anybody else. And let me say this, and I'm going to hush. If you lost tonight, if, see those of us, let me explain it like this. Those of us that are saved, we're children of God in a place set aside for the worship of God. If you're not a child of God tonight, you're a special guest in His house. But I'm going to tell you the truth tonight. I love you too much to send you out of here without telling you the truth. People say, well, you're awful bold. I'm just more afraid of God than I am you. That's all it is. One day you'll stand before God, I promise. I promise you will stand before God. And you're never going to want anything in this life as bad as you'll want to enter into that place prepared for us. You'll never want anything as bad as that. 
but God's going to do a blood test. <laughs> yes, he is. I, I, I use my boys as this example all the time. You know, they might grow up one day, uh, they might deny me, they might say they he, they never knew me or whatever, but there's proof in their blood that they belong to me. Mm-hmm. God will do a blood test one day, and He'll look for that vesture dipped in blood, that wedding garment, and if you don't have it on, you will not enter in. You will not enter in. You will die lost and spend eternity separated from God. You'll be cast out into hell and one day brought up and cast into the lake of fire. Sound good to anybody? Don't me. I'd much rather just have the blessings of God, wouldn't you? I'd much rather have a mansion that's been prepared for me. I'd much rather spend eternity in His presence and in His glory than eternity separated from Him. Tonight, He's opened the door for you. The door is swung wide open tonight. But you'll have to walk through that door yourself. He's not going to drag you kicking and screaming through there. So as we stand tonight, this altar is open. I urge you come and pray tonight. Christians, you cannot expect the lost to come and pray if you don't. That's right, brother. They will not step out unless you do. So you've got a duty tonight. Come and pray.
Don't be cut short. Thank you.